Hi there, my name's Andy Simmons. I'm 42 years old, a bit like a marathon. I've been living in France for 12 years now. I develop renewable energy projects as a full-time job, and then in my spare time, I do a bit of running and a bit of flying. Hiking and flying is when you combine running or walking with flying, basically. So I started doing flying about just over three years ago, and I, when I took it up, I knew that it was gonna be a really nice way to combine with my running sport, because basically you get to the top of these mountains and what better way to go down than, than sitting down and enjoying the views. Just over a year ago, I had an idea of, of really trying to combine hiking and flying as a kind of numbers game, where I was aiming to get as many uh, cumulative meters of ascent possible in 24 hours. Gained a total of nearly 17,000 meters over that 24 hour period. I've run the UTMB four times now. I dropped out once and then I've finished three times. Hike and fly 2.0, basically the idea came probably af after the UTMB. I thought, well, that would be a nice project now to see if I can run as fast, maybe even faster around the UTMB, but flying the downhills rather than running them. So I discussed this with, with Scott and with Ozone, my, my sponsors for, for running and flying, and we kind of thought, yeah, let's, let's do this. Hike and Fly 1.0 was really a, a numbers challenge and it was really focused on optimizing the timing at the top and the bottom. Whereas Hike and Fly 2.0, it's more of an adventure. I am Christophe Claire. I'm a runner, paraglider, and life made me a friend of Andy. This was a good opportunity to share something together. I'm sharing with Andy this love for running, for paragliding, and for ice cream. And this is really like the very good opportunity to, to go around Italy and have some fun together. What's really difficult is the wind conditions and the weather conditions, which is like the big unknown. So. UTMB, it doesn't really matter if it's if it's hot or it's cold, you can run around. Uh, whereas tomorrow when I'm running and flying, when I'm doing the flying bits, uh, if the wind's too strong or in the wrong direction or if there's a storm, then yeah, flying doesn't always work so well. So a little bit nervous, a little bit fingers crossed that the weather's gonna, gonna be good. <laughs> Preparing for hike and fly for me is actually really easy because it's basically doing two things that I just love doing. So it's not like I have to force myself to get out and go for a run or go for a fly. Let's go. <laughs> The alarm went at half past two and we went straight to the church, the little chapel in fact, in the centre of Chamonix down there. It was half past three when I started running down that road, which you normally run at, at six, 6.30 in the evening in the UTMB, so it was early morning, early morning. Ran down to Les Ouches and then up to the Col de Vosa. Just on the right of Col de Vosa, there's a little field on a nice slope, uh, kind of pointing towards the Col de Bonhomme and Contamine. Um, so took off just at, just after half past five, which is uh, which is just the legal limit of when you can take off in France. So it's half an hour before official sunrise. So we had a quite a short first flight down into the valley and landed just short of uh, Contamine. And then it's a, a long, long run to, to Col de Bonhomme. I'm getting ready to wait for Andy and try and keep up with him running up. And then the struggle is, can I run down quicker that he can undo his paraglider, fly down, pack his paraglider again. Uh, Refuge Moté, it's called. Normally it's like a long, horrible run up that road uh, in the UTMB, so uh, it's nicer doing that bit sitting down. <laughs> at the top of a beautiful mountain, ready to run, lean forward, and fly off it. What more do you need to motivate you in life? <laughs> Both cold less behind. Now we're just looking for a nice place to take off. 
Bit of a gamble because the wind was coming in a little bit. We didn't know exactly where would be good to take off, whether the air was going to lift us into the sky, whether there was enough thermal currents. Christoph did a, got a bit higher in the air and managed to cross over to Berton uh, and got further up the Val Ferry. I crossed a little bit too early and landed quite low in the Val Ferry, so I had a little bit of run up the valley there. From the Col Ferre, you then dropping back into Switzerland. So we've got a nice flight down to La Foule and into that beautiful valley actually in Switzerland, which is quite remote, pristine, you know. <laughs> then sort of finished a little bit down the valley, up to Champagne. Welcome to Champex Lake. And then we're ready to go up to the Refuge Bovine, which is uh, another thousand meters climb, I think, about above Champ Champagne. We got to the top of the hill and it was blowing a gale up there. Went off to the takeoff point just above, but it was too windy. So that was not a takeoff option for me. So we ran down to Col de Forcla. There you go. Sat in a fountain for, for a minute or two to cool off. <laughs> uh, a pint, please. Then had a big pint of beer, a massive burger, and slept really, really well. And then it was day two. <laughs> so we just dropped down to Triant. It's like a 10 minute downhill. Okay, let's go. up from Triant to Refuge de Sepp, it's called. And again, as, as for most of the takeoff points, I had to go a little bit higher than where the UTMB course goes. And the wind was really strong when we got up there at the start. And I was like, whoa, this is a bit like last night. Maybe this isn't gonna happen. It's been quite windy, this is the thing. Uh, it's probably okay. There's a lot of wind and altitude. And by the time we kind of found the place to take off, it, it just dropped a little bit and it was, it was perfect in the end. Just got around the corner and managed to land next to the, the train station before the campsite in, in Valorcine. Give us a smile. The team manager was there. Handing, handing out tarts, which was great because I hadn't really eaten anything in the morning. <laughs> so then that gave me a second wind and we were straight up to Col de Monte. And then we got like halfway up the climb and the clouds in the sky were starting to go like really, really dark. <laughs> and then suddenly in the space of five minutes, it was just raining, 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 raining. So we hid under this tree for like four or five minutes and the rain started to subside. Got to the top, Tete au vent, suddenly massive hailstorm. <laughs> we left a few minutes later, got to La Flegiere, and actually suddenly it was kind of a bit calm and there was almost a bit of southerly thermals coming up the hill. So we threw out the gliders, got a yeah, perfect little weather window. Touchdown and we knew we were like a K, K and a half from the church. So we ran a K and a half, it was like six or seven minutes and then we we're at the chapel. Happening. Yeah, that was so much fun. <laughs> the weather window was always going to be tricky and it was always a bit touch and go as to whether it was going to work. So really, really happy to have actually got all the way around. There was only one flight that we couldn't do. So to have done all the other flights is, is just great. A bit tired, but wow, it was such a good feeling and such an enjoyable way to get around the UTMB course. My legs are probably, uh, they're tired, but they're much less smashed than when I do the UTMB in, in 22 and a bit hours.